way out in southeast Tennessee, somewhere between Nashville and Chattanooga, lives one of the best guitar builders in the world. Now, Nathaniel would not say that about himself uh, because he's far too humble for that. But as someone who has loved and cherished and chased guitars for over 20 years, Nathaniel Wright is building some of the best guitars in the whole world. And so when I got my chance to order one, I jumped on it. And so a few weeks ago, I ordered this guitar and while I was driving, I'm moving my family across the country from Virginia to Louisiana. We got to spend a couple days in Tennessee and I had to go over and see the progress on number 70. This is a Nathaniel Wright guitar. So I wanted to bring you along to show you some of the interactions and my first reactions to seeing this guitar in person. And then I'll come back afterwards and I'll show you what I was thinking and feeling in those moments uh, seeing this guitar in person. Holy cow. Yeah. Dude, this is so much, I thought it would be more like red. It's very like peachy. <laughs> yeah, it, it should get a little more depth and color under uh, clear coat though. Yeah, and it all, it all works. I mean, that's where I was so bogged down in the, like in this, just the spec sheet where I'm like, I'm building this thing in my head. I'm like, will it be cool? Yeah. Like, will a sunburst with natural sides be cool? And I love it. it the contrast. It's really, really good. Uh, you know, I don't... Can I pick it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of it's glued on. The the neck is bolted on. Okay. Just to hold it in place. Okay. But yeah, the contrast, and we, we talked a little bit over text about how the herringbone kind of tied yeah. the bright white to the black. That's what I was hoping. Nice crossover. So in my mind, I was like, okay, it's basically black with the herringbone, mm -hmm. and then the herringbone has that little lighter color with the ivoroid into the maple. Mm -hmm. My brain had I'd at least thought that through. Oh man, the neck profile is killer. Good. Yeah, soft V. Yeah, yeah. It's not as V as I, as it could have been. Sorry, I don't mean oh, that any, like. <laughs> it could be very V. Yeah, I mean, I love, that's yeah. such an approachable neck. And a volute. Dude, yeah. I freaking love volutes. Yeah. Um, man. And it's, yeah, so bright, so stark on that maple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really nice piece. And so what, you had to do this afterwards? Yeah, I forgot I was supposed to, <laughs> <laughs> to do the yeah. uh, zipper pattern back strip. So after I already had glued and joined the back together, I had to make a jig to route it out. Okay. And as, I mean, it, Turned out yeah. really tight, thankfully. You know, you get nervous routing into something and you might have a gap anywhere, but this is close up really Yeah, hard, that's one thing I'd never really thought about was how hard it is to get this centered against the binding, with, centered on the neck, on the heel block. Yeah. And then the herringbone. And then the herringbone too. So some people will do their uh, end graft in before they glue the top and back on, which is probably easier to do it that way. But if you are following your center lines as you build it, it's easier to glue the sides to the back and top. For me, I mean, I, you could always pencil it in yeah. on the end graph, but for me, it's easier to just follow my glue joint of the sides mating. So. The headstock overlay is amazing. Oh yeah, that Brazilian rose wood. That came from that board I was telling you about from Vermont. Oh yeah. Whoa, cool. From, from the boot bench. Yeah, somebody's mudroom boot bench. Have you, have you ever been to Vermont? No, I don't oh, think so. Spring very muddy. Was the was the burst hard? Was that a? It wasn't hard. It was just I'd never done one that concentrated in one area. Yeah. So I was a little nervous. Mainly, you know, you sneeze and <laughs> spray gun <laughs> goes across, and suddenly it's just a solid black top. So <sighs> I was a little nervous. About Which would have also been cool. Would, I'd be cool with a black good. top. I mean, it, yeah, but. it'd pop really nicely with it. But. Yeah, I was a little nervous and trying to. You sent me a picture of. A at some point, scene. I at some point I was like, I have to stop sending Nathan pictures of. <laughs> <laughs> but any small burst I'd find. That's the one I was looking at. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I tried to match how the burst fades right before you get to the bridge. Yep. And then it's really just concentrated halfway, not even halfway into the rosette. So as this guitar was kind of being built in my brain, I was like picking all these things that I've loved from guitars from the last. 
20 years of obsessing about them. Yeah. So small burst, and then for me it was so important to have the belly up bridge. Yeah. yeah. And dude, one thing we have to talk about is the inlay. Oh yeah. Yeah, the dogwood yeah. is so cool. That was one that we just, it was like through texts and a couple phone calls. So where, what's the story with this maple or where did this come from? Uh, I got this from a guy out of Georgia. I'm not 100% where it came from. Um, it's supposed to be a sugar maple, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, it's I, beautiful. It, it just looks like it's underwater. Yeah, yeah. You look in here, there's just little ripples inside the green. You know, you can catch in the right light and there's little, like, not quite bird's eye, but yeah. just little circles of different textures. And I just love it. I'm so excited about this. When you bend quarters on it, it bends really easy for you. <laughs> and this just <laughs> fights you. On, fights you like crazy. And, <sighs> And I've done, you know, I knew it would do it, but I, I just liked how it looks so much. Mm -hmm. and, and I had showed you the set, and we just decided to go for it. But it takes a little extra work to I'm sorry. iron it. Oh, I yeah, did. That's fine. It's, hey, it, it makes me have to learn things. Yeah. I mean, I've done it before, but it, it's, you always learn a little more as you mm -hmm. fight flat sawn woods as you bend it. Because it, what, it, you know, Cortisone will bend nice and straight. You won't mm -hmm. get much rippling. This stuff will ripple on you because of the different mm -hmm. densities. And I'm sure. Because so. you, I mean, you look at it, you just see there's so much. There's grain in it. There's yeah. There's so much going on. We talked a little bit about maybe bursting it a little bit, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just nice it's to see just, it all. Just, I like it. Yeah. This is this is so exciting. Sweet man. Well, yeah. what's what's the what's the timeline on? Uh, on completion. Can you wrap it up in a couple days? Yeah. yeah. Before I go to Louisiana? Yeah, yeah. we can. It'll, it'll relic really fast. Good. We can put yeah. strings on tomorrow. Yeah. Blue the bridge on today. I mean, I'll just drill holes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 We can just bolt on like yeah. that. Hey, we can even do a plastic bridge if you want. <laughs> I could get a Strat bridge. Just honk, yeah. honk. bolt it down. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, two to three weeks out. It depends Amazing. if I can get clear coats on this week yeah. and then give it a week to rest and then yeah. do a top coat and, and buffs. It's such a beautiful guitar and it's going to be such a special lifelong thing. Awesome man. So yeah, red spruce top, 37 spec bracing and then kind of, well, modified tone bars Yeah. for the Gibson style scalping on the trebles and marking oh. the bass. Oh, cool. Yeah. I can't believe I get to own this guitar at the end of this. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Sweet. Walking into that room, I was so excited. And Nathan has done such a good job on that guitar. The thing that we were really trying to aim for, I could see in my head that the really dark sunburst would pull the dark from the herringbone, and then that bright white in the herringbone would tie into the ivoroid, and then that ivoroid around the edge would tie into that really bright white maple. Now, it's a very stark looking guitar. I'm very excited about that. Afterwards, I went to Carter Vintage to try and see if I could find any guitar that would really, uh, that had also a dark top or a sunburst top and then natural sides. I couldn't find one. I'm sure they exist out there. If you've ever seen one or if you have a picture of one, please send it to me. I, I know that I've at least seen one guitar of progress uh, from Gibson from the 1930s that had a similar vibe. I know I've seen one. But I need to find others, especially ones on the internet. So if you if you know of Sunburst with maple back and sides that's natural, please let me know, send a comment, uh, or send it to me on Instagram, at Jeremy the Guitar Hunter. Uh, if you ever are in the chance in your life that you get to order a custom guitar, Nathaniel is an amazing person to work with because he's been so helpful along the way. There were things that were so overwhelming to me, like choosing the rosette. I didn't know what I wanted. I knew I really liked abalone with that bright uh with the the light part of the sunburst and contrasting against the dark but i didn't know how to do it one ring two rings seven rings white black white al ivoroid uh abalone what do you want he was able to show me an example of something show me some photos from the internet and by the end of that day it was done and i was totally happy with it so he's been a great guide through this process because a lot of us you order a guitar because you want your dream guitar but if you're like me or most people, you don't dream of every singular specific detail on these guitars. So for me, it worked out so well to have somebody that can see the guitar because they are both there in person building the guitar, but they also have done this before and they can walk you through the process of building guitars. 
So what comes next for this guitar? It, it needs a bunch of work. It's got a whole lot of stuff that it still needs. It needs peg head holes drilled, it needs the bridge glued on, needs the saddle cut and polished, needs the nut cut and polished, needs to have strings put on it, obviously. And then we'd also talked about putting a pickup in this guitar. So if it needs a pickup, one of the main things we're going to do is I, I'm going to do a K&K &K Pure Mini. That's my favorite, just trust it. It will be in there forever. It works so well um, and it can just go really well into my pedal boards. I know how to handle that pickup and it sounds very accurate and true. And so I need to get one of those ordered and get it sent to Nathan. Now, I've done that before. I did that with my Gibson Country Western. Nathan put it in so easily easily and uh, so that's that's one of the main things I need to get done in the next few weeks but this guitar is pretty close it's got Waverly tuners that come from Stu Mac and it's got a beautiful Gator one of the ATA their flight cases which is one of my favorite cases uh, these days if you're gonna buy a new case that is not a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars thanks for watching this video i'm jeremy this is guitar hunter uh tell me if you're ordering a custom guitar because i know you are i i talk to all of you a lot of the time uh some of you a lot of the time and uh, i just i love that i get to do this uh with my life and my time so thanks for watching i'm jeremy more on south louisiana here soon but it's going to be very loud. That's a Kia Soul. Did you hear how loud that car was? That was a Kia Soul. Someone stole their catalytic converter. Welcome to South Louisiana. <laughs>